Details have emerged on how Good News International cult leader Paul Ntenge Mackenzie presided over the burials of hundreds of his followers in ceremonies he referred to as Harusi, the Kiswahili equivalent of the word wedding, after starving them to death in Shakahola, Kilifi County. Now, beyond the burials that he referred to as weddings, he referred to faithful as heroes after starving them to death encouraging them to join the dying spree, claiming that the end times had come. Well, the cult leader also forbade members from contact with the outside world. Hassan Mugambi went through court documents filed on Friday and brings us more. Shakahola. The more you seek to understand what transpired, the more intricate it gets. In a fresh affidavit filed before Shanzu Court, investigating officer Chief Inspector Raphael Wanjohi details how Good News International cult leader Paul Mackenzie presided over the burials of hundreds of his starved followers at the Shakahola Forest he referred to as Jangwani. Mackenzie termed the burials Harusi or wedding, and those who died in his cause were revered as heroes within the ranks of his Good News International cult. The information obtained from survivors interrogated by police revealed that Mackenzie established a system of governance in the forest with him at the helm. The cult leader cherry-picked trusted followers and appointed them as part of his close cabinet. His so-called closed cabinet held meetings every Saturday at Mackenzie's residence in the forest to brief him on the status of the fast. He prescribed that the fast begins with children, then when all were dead, youth would follow, then women, before men wound up the deadly exercise. He is reported to have told them that he would ultimately follow them much later. <laughs> The survivors say in order for him to ensure that he had proper grip of the forest, he created eight villages and gave them biblical names, appointing his close cabinet to lead each village. They were Galilee, Judea, Bethlehem, Jerusalem, Emmaus, Sidonia, Tiru and Sikare. The leaders of the eight villages coordinated teams of security, transporters and grave diggers who are reported to be enforcers of starvation before signaling Mackenzie to preside over burials. These statements were gathered from 40 out of 65 adult witnesses rescued from Shakahola. Out of 17 minors, eight have recorded statements. The document that sought to persuade the court to allow for Mackenzie and co-accused to be held for 60 more days revealed that exhumation is yet to be conducted in at least 10 mass graves identified and marked for the exercise. Out of 243 bodies exhumed, 73 belonged to minors, 158 adults and 12 are yet to be determined owing to the level of decomposition. According to the affidavit, regarding the cause of death, preliminary findings are that 61 are inconclusive, 92 died out of starvation, 4 cases of asphyxia, 5 cases of head injury and 1 case of strangulation. <laughs> The state sought 60 more days to hold Mackenzie, an application that was opposed by his lawyers but will be decided upon next week. Hassan Mugambi, Citizen TV.